Join Lady Apostle Diana Adu for an online prayer camp encounter on the Good News TV and on Facebook every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. BSD and on Wednesdays from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. BSD for a rebroadcast. It's a new day awake your dawn with the word, worship, and warfare. On the Good News TV that is www.goodnewstv.org.uk and on Facebook at Lady Apiana Adu Cristo. Makita, Queen of Sheba. Makita, Queen of Ethiopia. An Africana Womanist Reconstruction of Black African Women in the Bible. By Lady Apostle Diana Adu. A black girl in the songs of Solomon, who is called the Shulamites, is Makita, Queen of the South, Saba. Josephus positions Saba in Moroi, Ethiopia. Streaming live on Sunday and Wednesday on the Good News TV. On Facebook. Hey, shalom and God richly bless you, my dear brother and sister in Christ, my dear sister and brother in Christ. Ah, do I have my sisters out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How has the week been for you? As for me, it has been bad for grace, yes, for grace and for the word of God that inspires me day and night to face the harsh realities of life and to help me to position my mind positively, knowing that a According to Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Woo! I know the thoughts, thoughts to prosper you and give you a better end, a better future. And if there's something about this, this, this um, online service, today's, tonight's, or wherever you're watching as well, online service, I am just thrilled, 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 because it's about raising our consciousness on our Imago Day, who we are in Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My name is Lady Apostle Diana Edu, spiritual lead of the Diana Edu Royal Global Ministries and Missions. We are streaming live right now on YouTube on Facebook, that's Facebook at the Dianedu Royal Global Ministries and Missions on YouTube, that's the Dianedu Ministries and Missions Officials, and here on Facebook, and here on the Good News TV, that's www dot goodnewstv.org.uk for those of you who say we you cannot watch good news tv you still have option to watch us live on facebook or on youtube hallelujah can somebody shout a big hallelujah with me the bible says i was glad when they said unto me let's go into the house of the lord how good and pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity it is like an oil flowing from the head of aaron into his head tonight i'm not going to talk about the oil of aaron but the oil of the woman a woman an african woman a beautiful african woman a wealthy african woman an intelligent African woman, a rich African woman. Ah, my God, I can't wait for the service, to, for the sermon to start and for us to enter into prayer. But then we have to first enter into the primest prayer, uh, that is worship. And, oh God, I'm going to reveal to you why Africans like singing. It is our call, it is our commission, it is our mission. And we'll find it in this beautiful African woman whom I'm going to present to you, whose name is Makeda, the Queen of Ethiopia. But for now, even as Psalm 72 says that, and the worshippers are bringing golden incense from Sheba and Saba, which is the African people, can we also go, as Makeda did to King Solomon, as the three wise men, the black one among them, did to Jesus, and as we worship it, can we take our gold and our incense? So worship is not just incense alone, it's not the spiritual sacrifice alone, but also the monetary aspect. Why? Because we need money to support God's kingdom on earth. To support the Dianedu Royal Global Ministries. And so it's gold and incense. So take your gold and let me bless it. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring our sacrifice of worship. We bring our gold and our incense. Receive it, O God, and make Diana be royal global ministries and missions that affects our ground for whoever has consistently been given and sowing into this ministry and our vision and our commission, which is to preach the gospel unto the ends of the earth through the media, TV and radio and all the various medias you have availed to us. Bless their substance and let good measures press down, shaking together, running over, be their portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Let healing be the portion of the givers. Let bread be the portion for the Lord that gives bread. Seed to the sower is the same that gives bread to the eater. For the seed that has been given to the sower, let it multiply in multiples of bread. Give them that bread miracle that you did, feeding five thousands of people. Give them that bread miracle, Lord. Give them their daily bread. Give them whatever bread is symbolic of. Give them their daily sustenance in your mighty name. Lord, I ask, give them for whoever is weary, tired, and does not want to move on in life again. Whoever has sown into this ministry, Lord, give them life, the bread of life. Breathe life. Fill them with your living living your life your life your life your life your life your life your bread the bread of life receive the life of jesus as you sow into the dynasty royal global ministries and missions receive life receive eternal life receive physical life receive strength to move on as we worship in jesus name amen shall we worship oh lord you're beautiful don't go away We'll be right back. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. For when your eyes are on my life, your grace abounds to me. Oh Lord, please light the fire that was been bright and clear replace the love of my first love that bends with holy fear I want to take your word and shine it all around but first help me just to live it long and when i'm doing well help me to never seek my goal for when my reward is giving glory to you Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see, and when your eyes are on my life, your grace abounds. To me, and all my life, your grace abounds to me.
Hallelujah. I've, I, this song was chosen to reflect the theme for uh, today, tonight, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, this night, wherever you're watching us from. If you just logged in, you're watching the It's a New Day TV broadcast, which is an, an online church service, a prayer camp, where we meet for one hour to rightly divide the word of truth, to eat of the word of God and use the word to plead our cause before the throne of God. And tonight, I'm so glad um, and privileged to present Makeda, Makeda, Makeda. Makeda is the Ethiopic name given to the queen of Sheba, who, according to the book of First Kings 2 through 13, went to visit Solomon. We have a historic account also of her by one of the great historians of our church history, Josephus Flavius, whom I keep on pulling up because some of her, her, her treatises and her, her writings are put under the carpet, especially the ones which have to do with black people. So I, and, and most of his writings are used to support Christian theology. And so I pull him up because he's one of the verifiable, verifiable, even though a lot have been said about him when it comes to Christian history, he's the one we pull up to show that there was a historic Jesus, that there was a historic Mary of Magdalene. Amen. Amen. So Makeda is the name given by Ethiopians to the queen of Sheba that went to Solomon, a story which many Christians know, but they have never known her name, and there are a lot of confusion about her, especially with Western theologians um, uh, arguing that she came from Yemen. Uh, we've got Yemeni, Ye Yemenis, Jews, we've got black Jews all over Yemen. So you can position it to be Yemen, but they're still black people. Yeah, because they are Hamites. Hamites. Uh, if time permits, I'm going to show you that Sheba is um, a descendant of Ham. So they are black people, whether they ended up in Saudi Arabia, whether they, uh, this week I've been doing a lot of research and I'm, uh, I'm being flabber. I mean, I'm, uh, my mind is blown. We have Chinese blacks and the Buddha itself is originates from Ham, <laughs> from Ham, the son of uh, the father of all black people. You go to India, we have black Indians. Uh, last week, is as if God wanted to prove his case, one of my students, she sat in front of the first row, and this was a black girl. Now, I asked, where do you come from? She said, India. I looked her her hair, she's got straight hair like most of us, uh, most um, most Europeans have. I looked under her hair, and it's no wig. This is a 12 year old child, and her skin was black as dark as uh, black. I don't know, but the hair looked. And she said, I was born in uh, I think India and brought to the UK when I was nine months old. So, black people are all over the world and my research takes me that they all originated from Africa and spread out. The one that fascinates me above everything is the Falashi Jews and the Yorubes of Nigeria and the Igbos of Nigeria and the Gans of Ghana and the Ashantis from Sudan. Woo! Know yourself when you go to the Egyptian temple. That is what is written there. If you don't know yourself, somebody is going to give you an idea the identity of yourself. So, tonight, we are going to delve into a matriarch of the Christian faith whose name is Makeda. And it's been about two months that I keep on presenting women and their position in the Bible and God's perspective or God's optic or how God sees women and how God wants us to see women and I started from the month of March where we did Edel Kenegdo how God 
gave the woman to man according to the Genesis narrative and what God made the woman to be. And Ezer Kenegdo, it on YouTube for free at the Dianedu Ministries and Missions Officials. You can watch it for free. Then in the month of March, as led by the Spirit of God, I began to um, delve out African women in the Bible. Because this is what we don't hear. African women in the Bible and thank God for the Holy Ghost that helped me to bring up Eve, Zipporah, Hagar, and they are not just African women we want to show off, but they prefigure the Paschal mystery because in the month of April, we were dealing with the Passover. Somebody say amen. And they are prominent and critical. They are prominent figures in scripture and their role is critical and undeniable and undisputable and cannot be erased from the bible or from history that is why it is good you learn the bible for yourself you ask the holy spirit and you you do theological black theology it's not sometimes somebody tell me i, I did theology well, it doesn't mean anything <laughs> we have a western oriented epistemology and we have black theology which is heavenly black oriented epistemology all right so it's not just doing theology but a theology that raises your consciousness as a woman is theologian woman is the theology is under the umbrella of black theology we read scripture with an hermeneutic of suspicion not known only as femi fe feminist theologians would do but with an afrocentric womanist hermeneutic of suspicion so when i read for example when i'm looking for i'm i'm doing a research on the queen of sheba i don't just bump, i don't just go to any website because i know that if i go to this particular website it is a western oriented and so it is going to give me a western oriented hermeneutics so i do a lot of research and nowadays, thank God, there are a lot of um, doc documents that have come out with concerns to Africa and the Bible. So it's not just looking through any commentary. If you look through 99.1% of the Western-oriented commentaries, you're not going to get what you're looking for. Anytime you press the Queen of Sheba, they are going to tell you that archaeology says, what archaeology? Your archaeology or my archaeology? I've told you, never forget, preaching is biased even if the person is subject to the holy ghost and they don't have the knowledge they can make a mess don't forget it therefore theology is bias somebody say i hear you i hear you i hear you so as i said we're going to delve about a woman called makeda and the story begins in the book it's just a short story in the book of Kings, first Kings chapter 10. That is where she first appears, and the same narrative is recounted in the book of Chronicles, chapter 9, verse 1 through 12. So let's read the scripture before we enter into our exegesis, hermeneutics, and our prayer. Why am I presenting Makeda? Because as I said, I'm presenting black African women in scripture who play a critical role to Christian history, who prefigure Jesus Christ and who prefigure the Pascal, who are forerunners of Jesus Christ and who prefigure the Pascal mystery. Somebody say amen and I say amen. And this one is not a common one. This is a heavy one this is a heavy one last week we saw mary of magdalene and many of makeda's narrative reflects so much on mary of magdala and so and even hagar so i really see mary of magdala as embodying makiba and her ministry for example, when you go to Songs of Solomon 1, 12, it says, Whilst my king is at table, I pour my mare. Uh, and theologians agree that this is very similar to the four 
uh, gospel narratives about the woman who breaks her alabaster box on the feet of Jesus or the one who anoints the head of Jesus, which last week we saw that could be Mary of Magdala. Hallelujah. So she's the woman with the spies. And next week, as God would help me, I'm going to bring a sermon on women with the spies. Women with the spies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then she also prefigures, she also is forerunner of M M Mary of Magdala. She prefigures Mary of Magdala because Mary of Magdala is found in the tomb at the garden. I have to bring a sermon about gardens because women who play an important role in the Pascal mystery are all positioned in at in the garden. We've got four gardens in scripture. We've got the garden of Eden, the first garden mentioned in scripture where the woman is positioned as being bruised but where God comes to restore her Eve. We've got the second garden which is the garden of the woman i'm going to talk now she calls herself a garden and she finds her lover in a garden and she's called the shulamites and first the first person to bring her parallel as an african woman was church father origin who himself is an african and even though he was very most of the church fathers were very um how do you call it uh patriarchal this church father was able to sow the songs of solomon into the narrative about christ and the church and that is where she sees that she is an african woman and that is why we she he, he says she's an african woman how because in songs of solomon 1 5 it says i am black and beautiful this has been disputed by western theologians and their argument is that black does not mean she is a black woman because some verses say she is from jerusalem no if you read the whole of songs of solomon she is distinguished from the daughters of jerusalem when you read where she says i'm black and beautiful which is a theme for tonight makita black and beautiful i checked the word black there it means black black deep black it doesn't refer to someone who has been sun tanned it doesn't refer to somebody who is uh, maybe made of mediterranean olive skin color he says black deep black and the word black deep black is kusu i told you in ghana we have when we say kusu it means dark the word kusu or black deep black is the egyptian word for uh, which is kush it is used in by the Assyrians, it's used by the Babylonians, and that is where we have the word the Kushite, the Kush or the Kushite kingdom, where this woman ruled. She also, and therefore, she breaks her alabaster box. Uh, uh, secondly, she so she, she is symbolic of one the woman who broke the alabaster box and prefigured the death and resurrection of jesus that is the pascal mystery secondly she with the mayor also according to church theologians church fathers prefigure that one of the three wise men who came to do what to bring their gold incense and may i will say all the three of them were black people because gold mirror and incense are the possessions of the sabians and that is what we see this woman do secondly in the garden which we're going to use as our prayer point she says i went out to look for my lover sorry i was mentioning the garden so eve is positioned in a garden so we see that women's ministry is a kind of garden the garden is not just a home but it is a home which has a prophetic oil which has a priestly oil so that is why it is a, a lie for you to say a woman cannot be priest because she is positioned in a place where she offers what spiritual battle against the serpent the garden the garden of eden the garden of the shulamites the garden of gethsemane and what the garden mentioned in the book of revelations hallelujah the eternal garden so four gardens if i left one you can type it on and remind me of it four gardens garden of eden garden of the shulamites garden of uh, Gethsemane, Garden of Maria Magdalena, where the tomb was, yes, because the tomb was laid in a garden. So every woman in ministry is positioned in a garden and don't be deceived. So there are flowers in the gardens, but there are also the 
the serpent who is waiting to enter into the garden to do what to rule and mary magdalene say asked the uh, two angels have you seen where who my soul loves is where have you seen where my lord is when you go to the songs of solomon verse 5 <coughs> this woman this african woman asks the watchers have you seen where the one whom my soul loveth is so she prefigures so much uh, Mary Magdalene's ministry. That is why some church fathers, I said, beginning from origin, and even during the 12th century, the Middle Ages, she was now recognized as prefiguring or uh, a forerunner to Mary Magdalene. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, this is where we have the black Madonnas all over Europe in the 15th century. If you go to Italy, Milano, Duomo, the door has the image of King Solomon and of what? Of the Queen of Sheba. The black Madonnas all over Europe. So, the white people are worshipping a black uh, woman who is representative of the church because origin suggests that she is symbolic of the church that is where we have the bride of christ and i told you christ himself is black and so when one church father was asked uh why do you have a black madonna what we do one church priest one church theologian he said after all that mary Ma mary of jesus christ himself was of dark color so at the end of the day it is all dark colors. It's all black people prefiguring the Pascal mystery. I am black and beautiful. Can you take your Bibles with me to let's go to um, Songs of Solomon chapter 1 and we will come to okay let's read First Kings Makeda. That is where we find her story. I can't read all. So what I'll do is I'll read our main theme which is songs of solomon chapter 1 verse 5 and chapter 5 verse 9 please take your bible many bible translations in songs of solomon chapter 1 verse 5 has i am black but beautiful i am black but comely but the septuagint doesn't have that Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the first to be translated before we have our Bibles, says, I am black and beautiful. I am black and beautiful. And why has it been changed? Because of the Western concept of the downbeaten of black people, denigrating the black essence humiliating the black essence even to the extent that the bible itself is twisted so that instead of saying i'm black and beautiful it says i'm black but beautiful but tonight tonight if there is something to be done tonight it is about debunking the lies about black people and about black women and I pray the Holy Ghost will help me to do that. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. It says, I am so black. And even the Amplified Bible has put, But you are lovely and pleasant. That is how the uh, daughters of Jerusalem assures her. No. She is not a Bedouin woman. She is an African woman. I am dark as the tent, not dark. I am black as the tent of Kida, like the beautiful curtain of Solomon. That is already therapy. That is already therapy. That is already therapy. Negrum sum es formosa, I think, is the Latin. I am black. And so beautiful. I have told you over and over again that the Jewish concept about blackness was beauty. And that is why we see in the book of Isaiah chapter 18, we see in almost many of the scriptures that black is beautiful. So I want you to take your time. Look at yourself in a mirror. If you are a black woman watching, listening, and tell yourself, I am black. 
and I'm beautiful. I've got a smooth skin like the pear, like the curtain of Kedar. I got to know that black was ugly when I migrated to Europe. I had done nobody wrong. All I needed to have was a black skin. And my black skin determined my intelligence. My black skin intel determined my humanity in Europe. As opposed to what scripture. And when I was watching TV in Italy. And then these comics were mocking black people. And said we are so forgotten by everyone. Even by God. So much that we are not mentioned in the scriptures. That is how I started. Loving the Bible. I'm a past, daughter of a pastor. I know scriptures, but I was not a scholar of the word. And I began to study scripture. And the first sermon I bumped into was Beyond the Rivers of Utopia, a sermon by a Afrocentric preacher of our time, father of the Ghanaian church, Mensa Otabel. Then that is where my spirit came alive. And when I began to know myself, know thyself through the eyes of God, I began to search my history. Because when I look at Africa, where I'm coming from, nothing showed what the Bible was telling me that I was. So I had to dig into history. That is where I saw the prehistoric Ghanaian kingdom. Woo! That even predated the Sudan kingdom. And I saw the Kushite kingdom. Then I saw the Nubian kingdom. Then I saw that the 25th dynasty of Egypt were ruled by Nubians, Africans, Ethiopians. And I saw, and I saw that even women ruled in Egypt. And I saw that there was the Kandashi. Women ruling. Women ruling. I am black and beautiful. Black is beautiful. Say it. I did not say it. Bible is saying black is beautiful. Oh, daughters of Kedah. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem. I am black. Beautiful like the tent of Solomon. And as I said, origin positions. This unnamed Shulamites as the queen of Sheba and her story is mentioned in 1st Kings chapter 10 as I said and so I will just give a brief summary of it before there are so much to un unpack I pray the Holy Ghost will help me so much to unpack Makeda is called Nikaulas by Josephus who says she is from Ethiopia whilst many western scholars love to position her in Yemen, South, the Arab, South of Arabia Josephus, the attested church historian who had nothing to gain by being racist saying she is from Ethiopia she ruled in Ethiopia she ruled in Egypt and Boccaccio came in the middle centuries to reform and say she even ruled in where in Arabia so if you see that the, she's been positioned in Yemen is because she ruled also in Arabia somebody say amen the queen of Sheba visited Solomon according to the book of Chronicles and Kings first King 10 and stood in awe of the wisdom of Solomon tells in the Kebra Nages which is the holy book of the Ethiopians have detailed the visit to Solomon and how it ended up with her having a child with Solomon. The Queen of Sheba visited the court of Solomon and, in, and it's just a short and agreeable Bible tale and yet this simple narrative has inspired a myriad of legends, stories and artwork that explore the Queen as a wealthy underline it, as a wealthy and as a wise underline it wealth and wisdom. The black Ethiopian queen is symbol of wealth and wisdom according to 1st Kings chapter 10 
somebody say amen she goes to solomon because she was rich and when she had somebody who was richer than her she was surprised and she went to challenge solomon she was wise and when she heard that there was someone wiser than her she was shocked and went to see who on earth is wiser than her it means black women have been positioned by god to be wealthy black women have been positioned by god as an epitome of wisdom and not of foolishness my god the earliest mention of the queen of sheba as i said is found in the book of kings 10. the queen hears the rumors about the boundless wisdom of solomon and his relationship with god and travels and after putting riddles upon riddles before solomon and after solomon answers it she gives her life to god and adopt the jewish tradition while the story underlines solomon's authority and status as a prophet there is need for solomon to have this biblical woman to prove him to be who he is so the woman herself is used and a figure of the prophet yes she was a prophet she was highly spiritual somebody say amen the historical queen of sheba as i said is disputed by hero historians but we are clinging to the kebra nuggets the 14th century writer of the utopians themselves who narrate their own story and to Josephus, who lived in the Roman times. Hallelujah. Now, Jewish and Islam uh, have their own tradition. But one of the Jewish tradition in the Midrash positions that she was got pregnant with Solomon and her son was Nebuchadnezzar. Another Jewish tradition says that the son is called Ben Sirah. What I like is that it verifies the Ethiopian tradition, which says that he gave birth, the woman gave birth of a son of Solomon called Menelik, and whose dynasty ruled for 700 years until, or up to Haley Haley Salaisi, Haley Salaisi. So the line of Jesus Christ stretches to the Ethiopian dynasty. The queen initially brings gifts gold incense on camels with many servants she was wealthy she brought gold incense and abundance of wealth as a gift to solomon that is what the black woman is symbolic of somebody say amen somebody say amen unfortunately in islam and in some jewish sectors the woman has been demonized whenever a woman is powerful what happens she is demonized just like black women we have been sensualized and so the the, the queen of sheba during the uh, colonization times was symbolic of the sensual black woman as opposed to the pure and innocent and virgin white woman but we know this is the bond because she is a figure of the bride of christ that is why in our title we see queen of the south i don't use queen of sheba because it's when i put sheba she becomes just a ruler or regent of just one territory but I use the words of Jesus Christ himself, which we are going to see, where Jesus calls her queen of the south. For king of the south in biblical term means king of Egypt. So if she's queen of the south, then she's not just the queen of Ethiopia, but of Egypt and of Arabia, as Boccaccio tells us in his <coughs> sorry, <coughs> middle century. <coughs> sorry. Around 260 AD, early christian scholar origin of alexandra wrote a commentary of the songs of songs and connected the woman to the queen of sheba where she found black and beautiful when origin saw black and beautiful she said this is the relationship between solomon and the queen of sheba the queen of ethiopia origin queen of ethiopia we know that many of these black african biblical figures have been white washed and so it is important for you to do what to come back to yourself and know where africa plays in the bible hallelujah 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 the one i love most i've recounted the tale of the ethiopians uh what i love the one i love most is that of nigeria the yoruba people who have a tale about the queen of Sheba, a legend about the queen of Sheba in Egypt. 
and out till date people go there to pray to that shrine where it is supposed that her tomb is and they have resolved i don't know who answers that prayer but it is telling us that africa is not ignorant of biblical history somebody say amen what do i pick from this woman i used it to debunk the lies let me see some of the lies because it's very important before i go to the words of jesus let me use they said africans were living in caves no the archaeologists have proven when you go to utopia there is a place called the palace of the queen of sheba we know from kenya to ghana to sudan to egypt that africans lived in houses yes that were mad, but they built mind-blowing civilization. Somebody say amen, and I say amen. They said Africans don't have writing. Well, we know that Africans had writings. In my own research, I saw that the, uh, the uh, how do you call it, the, the Ghanaian form of writing, which is pictorial, was a writing already that existed also in many parts of africa it is called pretoria writing we have also the uh how do you call it the egyptian form of writing where symbols are used all these were forms of writings it is true that our sacred history was passed from mouth just as jesus passed sacred things from the mouth to Mary of Magdalene but we had writings we had writings somebody say amen so that is also a lie that is also a lie that is also a lie black is beautiful there is no way in scripture that the bible denigrates black people it is colonialism and slavery that began to humiliate commodify and do what and do what strip away the beauty in my good day of black people. I said black is beautiful. Once I was in Italy, a five-year-old boy who had come to visit us in the bathroom was scratching himself. And I said, why are you scratching yourself like that? Why are you rubbing yourself with a sponge? And he said, I went to school and I was told I was, uh, I was dirty. Coal has been poured, dung has been poured on me. And I said, come on, it is not true. It is not true. Then every white person too is an albino or acid has been poured on them it is not true it is not true and so if this woman is a legendary let me take you to the new testament for in the old testament she's symbolic and an epitome of what black people are and who black women are so let's go to matthew chapter 12 i am black and beautiful makeda the queen of ethiopia if she is a legend then in the book of matthew chapter 12 jesus mentions her and it's not just in the book of matthew chapter 12 but also in the book of luke matthew chapter 12 i think verse 42 please take your bible and read with me matthew 12 42 and this is where we're going to center on and pray with verse 42 says matthew chapter 12 verse 42 please Shakatalaba. So, in the book of, in her encounter with Solomon, she's an epitome of wisdom and of faith. In the songs of Solomon, she's an epitome of beauty, wisdom, worshiper, and what? The bride of Christ. So, she is the black woman, is an image of the church of Jesus Christ. The bride of Christ which is mentioned in the book of Revelations. And so when you see in the book of Philip where it mentions Mary Magdalene whom I told you was a black woman it is symbolic of the mystic marriage between Christ and his church just as this black woman is. So the church of Jesus Christ is symbolized in the Bible by black women and Makeda is one of the epitome of this black women so in matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 verse 42 the bible says that i'm starting from 40 
no verse 39 no 38 then some of the scribes came to jesus and said teacher give us a sign or a miracle proving that you are what you claim to be and jesus says no some sign will be given to you adulterous generation who seek and demand a sign but this is the sign that will be given to you he talks about jonah and he says even as jonah was buried in the womb of the sea for three days and three nights this is the sign that will be given to you that the son of man will be buried in the womb of the sea the heart of the earth so if jesus says if you are looking for a sign it is about the gospel and what is about the gospel the gospel is christ died was buried and resurrected that is the sign that you need to know that jesus is lord now jesus goes to verse 42 talking about his burial and his death he connects it in verse 32 not only with jonah because we preach a lot and use jonah's story as a symbol of the death burial and resurrection of jesus but when you go to 42 because i'm saying this african women are prefigure of the pascal mystery jesus is talking about as his death resurrection and his death burial and resurrection as a sign to this generation why his death resurrection and burial as a sign because it is after his resurrection that he restores all things and proves every lie out like the lie of black people my god princess will come out of africa ethiopia shall be my worshipers my god verse 42 jesus says and also the queen of the south you see jesus does not use sheba because jesus is intending that the reign and rule of this woman is above just one kingdom she is symbolic of the church of jesus christ she is symbolic of the gentile of us who have come to embrace the gospel my god and jesus mentions the queen of sheba and the nlt the new living translation and the good news bible have specifically put the queen of sheba i want jesus's version that is why our title the title can you pull it up again for me please of our sermon is the queen of the south the bride of christ the black woman is symbolic of the church she is not just a uh, symbolic of the church she is the royal priesthood and holy queen she is queen and she is priest she is queen and she is priest she is pray queen and she is priest so we debunk any theology that claims that women cannot rule as queens we debunk any theology that says women cannot be priest she went to solomon with gifts so she was wealthy the Kandashes in Acts chapter 8 sent his envoy, who is a man. And the man was reading the scripture. So wherever you are African, you have heard some lie. We said, if you want to hide a book, hide it. Uh, if you want to hide something from a black man, hide it in a book. It was never our portion. <laughs> because writing came from Africans. And the Greeks adopted it. That is what one black scholar has written a book called Stolen Legacy. Stolen Legacy. They stole from us until date. They are stealing our oil, our cocoa, our butter, and bringing it to the West and manufacturing it and giving it a new name. But tonight there is going to be an awakening. Somebody say an awakening. So, in Matthew 12, 42, it says the queen of the start will stand up, will stand up one of the versions i like says will rise up and it has to do with consciousness when i was reading that the holy ghost said stop there stop there stop there the queen of the south will stand up at judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of solomon and the holy ghost said stop and behold something more and greater than solomon has come who is that something more? It's Jesus. What is Jesus saying here? She's saying the black woman was a wealthy woman. One. The black woman is symbolic of the disciple of Jesus. For she came to learn. So Jesus discipled women. Jesus uses this to say he teaches women. He disciples them. So they can also go and make what? Disciples. And Jesus doesn't use any other figure for faith than a black 
woman. He says that and the queen of the south will stand up. And that is our prayer chart this morning, this afternoon, this night. My prophetic word for you is rise up. Know yourself. Rise up. Shake yourself from the lies. Rise up. Rise up. One of the ways to rise up is getting knowledge, education. We are chasing after spirituality. But if you don't have the word, you'll be deceived. Get my book, Leave Her Alone. It talks about women and their position in ministry. Using John 12, 7, Jesus says, Leave women to minister to me. Jesus never said, let a woman be silent. Don't preach that, let a woman be silent to me again. But Paul didn't die for me. Jesus died for me. Jesus uses a black woman. We all know the woman who argues with Jesus until she gets what she wants. We also know the Syrophoenician woman. She's also a black woman. But we never talk about Bathsheba. But yes, she's queen of Sheba. So she's the daughter of Sheba. We never talk about her because she's a black woman. But Jesus says she will rise up and judge and condemn. Jesus uses her as a symbol of faith. But my, my assignment tonight is one. We are going to pray that God will quicken our consciousness, our black consciousness, our imago day. To love, to design knowledge, and to know ourselves, even as the Bible tells us who we are, queens, who we are, women of wealth, who are we, women of faith, who are we, a symbol of the Proverbs chapter 9 woman, women of wisdom, that is what we are, we are not sex tools, we are not, we are, we are not, once I was discussing this study with one young girl, she said, oh, mommy, do you know, when I came to your gospel festival, uh, many of these people were saying, oh, ciao, Bella. And I said, yes, because that is the concept in Europe, the exotic black woman that you can have an affair with even though you are married. So the white woman also is very uncomfortable. Anytime a black woman is close to their husbands, I have a Catholic priest who writes, and when your husbands go with extra communitari, no. It is not the fault of the extra community to be beautiful. Black is beautiful. Oh, listen to me. Black girl, you are beautiful. You are not a sex toy. You are not foolish. You are not stupid. They said black people have got a low IQ. I debunk that lie. The Bible says a black woman visited Solomon and she's been used and referred to by Jesus Christ to talk about women of knowledge, learned women, discipled women, women who rise up to take their role as a royal priesthood, as a holy nation. Are you praying? Lay your hands on your head. Lay your hands on your head. The Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask for God. The black woman is a symbol of wisdom. If you lack wisdom, lay your hands on your head. Say, Lord, raise my black consciousness. Grant me wisdom. Grant me the desire to have knowledge, to study to learn, not only the Bible, to learn, going to theological um, universities and seminaries. If you want to do black theology, contact me, inbox me, and I'll help you to register at a very good university where you can do black theology, where your black consciousness will be awakened. It is never true that black people have a low IQ. The Bible debunks it for the Enoch was written. It is never true that the black people didn't know how to read and write. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And how do I know this? Songs of Solomon, chapter 5. We are praying with that. Songs of Solomon, chapter 5. Shakalaba da ba ya kalaba da ba da ba la de, aba da ba la ba kata ya ba la kata ya ba la ba de, impoti biri aba do si biri ebe. Songs of Solomon chapter five. Poto lo poto poto bolo poti ya ba la ba de. Boron do 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 do. When you read verse three, she says, "I have put on my garment, I have washed my feet." So we know that this woman has a garment but 
when you read verse 17 you know garment is symbol of your righteousness or a veil garment or a veil is symbol of your being a bride but when you read verse 17 it says the watchmen who go about the city found me when I was out to look for the one whom my soul loves they struck me and what is the striking that black people has been stricken colonization slavery and lies through education through the media lies about black people they wounded me and they wounded our children they wounded them with lies one black girl was telling me that they used to mock them because of the kind of texture of hair they have they used to mock everything they said we didn't have dresses to wear now if you live in a hot place what do you want us to wear? Three and four jackets. When summer comes, the, 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 the how do you call it? The show below, summer of England. Just let it be 18 degrees and you see people wearing t-shirts. How about 34 degrees in Africa? You wanted us to wear winter coats. And so because many of the women were bare because of the heat, they took it to be sensuality. So they have struck us. They have wounded us. Where that Jesus prefigures whatever was done to the black woman as symbol of what was done to him on the cross. So when they struck the black woman, when they wounded her, it has to do with what? The proto-evangelium, where the serpent will strike the black people, where the serpent has wounded the black people and the black woman. And the keepers of the world took away my veil and my mantle from me. The veil has to do with her covering. The mantle had to do with her ministry. The veil had to do with her humanity. Taking away the veil is a symbolic of humiliation. I want you to lift your voice and say, Lord, give me back my veil. God, give me back my veil. Give me back my dignity. Give me back my honor. If you are a black girl watching me, the Holy Ghost was telling me that the removal of the veil can be raped. Yes, Africa has been raped. For 500 years, Africa was raped. And so Africa is being raped. We are being emotionally raped, mentally raped, psychologically raped through media, through education, through church, through hermeneutics, through church. Yes, I mean, through church. Look Look at the, my shock was when the girl says I'm black and beautiful. But all pictures in Western Europe before the Middle Ages were putting a white woman. Even after the Middle Ages, in all the movies about the Queen of Sheba, it is a white woman that is playing this role. Why? Because the black people are sleeping. Arise to your consciousness. Arise to your consciousness. Take back your veil. Take back your mantle. Ah, I want to stay your consciousness. I want to stay your spirit that you are black and beautiful. Take back that mantle. Like yourself. Know yourself. Love yourself. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus take back your mantle take back your oil take back your identity take back your blackness that is who you are that is what God has made you pray with songs of Solomon 5 17 get back your veil if it is your husband that is denigrating you take back your veil take back your honor by prayer because we see this is a spiritual battle the battle that black people are fighting is a spiritual battle. God richly bless you. And see you same time next week. I've presented to you Makeda, Queen of the South. That is Queen of Egypt, Ethiopia and Arabia. And Queen of the Church who represents the symbol of the Church. Who is the Bride of Christ and a representative of wisdom, of beauty, of wealth, of fame, and much above all of faith who stands to condemn any other voice that is arising over the black women and black people we condemn it no weapon fashion against our blackness and our beauty shall prosper we condemn we condemn we condemn for the queen of the south will rise in judgment and condemn this generation we condemn this generation over any racist abuse placed on black children in jesus name and black people see you same time next week this is lady of Diana. Shalom. Bye. What does the Bible actually say about women in ministry? 
If you have ever asked yourself this question, you can find the answer in this book. A book written by Diana Adieu. Author Diana Adieu is a devoted Christian, well-educated, and well-known advocate for God's word to be declared to the world by men and women. With a comprehensive background in biblical study, worldwide ministry, and philanthropic endeavors, she shares her personal experiences regarding women in ministry. If you are a woman who has been stymied from releasing your full potential, yearning to share your God-given leadership role in the church, this book will empower you to launch out with God's blessing. And if you are a man who has often wondered if your thoughts on women in ministry are truly righteous, this book will be a revelation and blessing. Leave Her Alone is now available on Amazon Bookstore. Through the inspiring story of Tabitha narrated in the Bible, Apostle Diana Adu tells how the hurdles we face in life and in ministry leads us to the hope of knowing that there is a God who offers time and over again another chance to live again. To every Shunammite woman, there is an Elijah. To every widow of Zarephath, there is an Elisha. To every Talita, there is a Jesus, and to every Tabitha, God shall send a Peter. Key themes in the book includes How to identify your call How to identify destiny or ministerial predators How to preserve your call from predators The blessings of serving God The rewards of the faithful servant Rising above your storms How to live again Join Lady Apostle Diana Adu for an online prayer camp encounter on The Good News TV and on Facebook every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. BSD and on Wednesdays from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. BSD for a rebroadcast. It's a new day awake your dawn with the word, worship, and warfare. On The Good News TV that is www.goodnewstv.org.uk and on Facebook at Lady Afiana Adu Christo.